for story time. And just before the story time, I'd just like to share something that happened to me this week. As I remember Elder Stanley's children's story last week about the money being found, and this guy returned it. You know, I happened to find some money this week, but I don't have anybody to return it to. So, you know, I work for an enterprise car rental company. So, you know, a lot of people go through these cars and, you know, sometimes and things like that. You know, but I did tell my boss that, you know, if somebody says they lost the money in the car and, you know, keep that you know. So, nobody has said anything. So, I dispersed it. So, I gave my wife $10 and I gave $5 for me. She to take $5 for myself. So, I didn't return it like a good gentleman did. All right? <laughs>
she got older, she rewarded their attention by sharing her packed lunch on the way to the bus stop, and her brother joined in. And soon the crows were lining up in the afternoon to greet Gabby's bus, hoping for another feeding session. Well, Gabby's mother, Lisa, didn't mind that crows were consumed most of the school lunches she packed. I like that they love the animals and are willing to share. And while admitting she never really noticed the crows until her daughter took an interest in them. Well, they, every morning they fill the backyard bird bath with fresh water and they cover bird feeder platforms with peanuts. And Gabby throws these handfuls of dog food into the grass. And as they work, the crows assemble on the top telephone lines calling loudly to them. So there's some more of her stuff that she's been collecting. And there's their bird bath. Well, the after they had adopted this routine, the gifts started appearing. Mm -hmm. The crows would clear the feeder of peanuts and leave shiny trinkets on the empty tray, an earring, a hinge, a polished rock. That wasn't a pattern. Gifts showed up sporadically, anything shiny and small enough to fit in the crow's mouth. And one time it was a tiny piece of metal with the word best printed on it. I don't know if they still have the part that says friend, Gabby laughs, amused by the thought of a crow wearing a matching necklace. And when you see Gabby's collection, it's hard not to wish for gift-giving crows of your own. And then there was some, they got some icky stuff like a rotting crab claw, for instance. And there, in some places, they actually see that the, the crows have brought people um, dead baby birds. <laughs> but the one thing that I thought was really interesting, let me see if I can find it and read it to you exactly. The, uh, Gabby's mom, Lisa, regularly photographs the crows and charts their behavior for and interactions. And her most amazing gift came just a few weeks ago, and of course this is an old article, when she lost a lens cap in a nearby alley while photographing a bald eagle as it circled over her neighborhood. <laughs> And she didn't even have to look for it. Guess what? The next time she came out, it was sitting on the edge of the bird bath. <laughs> she had the crows returned it. Well, she logged onto her computer and pulled up their bird cam, and there was the crow she, suspect, she suspected. You can see it bringing it into the yard, walks it into the bird bath, and actually spends time rinsing this lens cap. I'm sure it was intentional. She smiles. They watch us all the time. I'm sure they knew I dropped it. I'm sure they decided they wanted to return it. Isn't that something? Crows are so amazing. Crows in captivity, in other words, if you have a captive crow that you keep as a pet, they'll learn how to fill a cup with water to moisten their food, or they'll bend a wire, hook into, a wire into a hook to lift a tiny bucket. And in the wild, they'll bring dry bread to a bird bath to soak it and soften it. I've got a piece of that kind of dry bread on my on my counter right now. I, I tapped it, it was so hard. But the bird will bring it, soak it, and so it's soft enough you can take bites of it. They may stack scattered crackers into a pile so they can carry the whole pile away. And in Japan, they place walnuts in front of stopped cars in an intersection and wait for the cars to go forward and crush the nuts. And then they swoop in and safely retrieve the nut meats. They can recognize individual human faces, and they can even mimic human voices. They are very social, and they're very terrific problem solvers. If you decide to go on the website or uh, some kind of book, you know, they're one of the few, only few wild animals who, who make their own toys. They have been observed breaking off twigs to play with socially. And there's a fantastic one in Russia where he takes a bottle cap, the raven, he's on a roof, he takes the bottle cap and he uses a sled and slides down the snow. <laughs> that one is really fun. He doesn't do it just once though. When he gets to the bottom, he picks up the cap, he goes back to the top, and he does it again. And then he picks up the cap and he tries the other side, can't go down very far, and then he says, oh, forget that, and he goes down the side, it works. <coughs> ravens. I was thinking about these ravens and how special they are. And then the Lord showed me this, I, I had forgotten, the Bible says ravens. First Kings 17.4, what did God say to Elijah? He said, can we read it? 
drink from the brook, and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. Well, even unusual. They were gift givers, weren't they? So Elijah received food from the ravens, and the ravens brought this little girl presents. God commanded them, and God, and they heard him, and they obeyed. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. So God has put a lot of intelligence in a lot of different animals, and this is one of them we really can, I think, admire, right? They're givers. I think there was one more experiment. They actually figured out that if they were giving food to the, to the ravens in this controlled experiment, if the um, one experimenter kind of cheated and didn't always give fair portions, they would ignore that, that experimenter the next time. <laughs> and they would kind of punish the other ravens who, they can tell whether it's a fair exchange or not. Wow. Interesting behavior. And God can command the ravens. All right, that's our children's story, but let's have a prayer before we go. Do you want to be a giver? Raise your hand if you want to be a giver. Is our God a giver? Amen. Amen. He's an over and over giver. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the ravens. We thank you for the um, beauty of your um, character being expressed in the life of, this, uh, of your animals and birds. And please help us to follow you closely all the days of our life. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.